Hi, welcome to lecture six of marketing analytics. For this particular video, we are going to explore the concept of category management using shopper trends and also think about space management. For this video, the learning objectives that we hope to achieve are firstly to examine the fundamentals of category management and its benefits, also explore the importance of space management within the confines of the retail constraints. Now, in Asia, there is a great diversity in terms of retail from the most basic retailing to the most concepts uh, and to the most advanced. In Asia, we can see that there are many different sorts of mom and pop stores, especially in Thailand and Sari Sari outlets in Philippines, meeting everyday grocery needs in a convenient location. It's all about how to make shoppers across the region embrace the hyper or supermarkets. For example, like vending machines are ubiquitous in terms of in Japan and virtual shopping emerging trend in Korea. Now, these are basically what we mean by making a presence uh, when we want to sell something and making it known to people uh, in the terms of the culture as well as the setting. However, while there is a growing concentration in retail, we also see that there is fragmentation in other spheres of influence. What you can see here is in terms of consumers, they have more money but less time and therefore convenience is very important to them. Most of the consumers are now even well better educated and they take up higher skilled jobs and travel much more. All these make them more savvy as experienced shoppers. The marketplace therefore has shattered into numerous different fragments, each with its own taste, needs, values, and marketeers must attempt to discern and create value for the consumers. So the product, eventually, there has been an explosion of products to meet a plethora of consumer needs. So therefore, more new product innovation comes into play and more convenience and needs and health concerns driving product development and growth. Even the media has been fragmented, which means that there is more information out there and information glut that minds cannot cope with. So the question is, how do we manage the right type of products, the right type of media to the right type of customers? You know, back in the 1918s, uh, when the Henry Ford wanted to make a car and he introduced the car to the consumers. He said that anybody could have had the car as long as the car was painted black. It was very funny that he mentioned that because that was the start of what we know as the modern mass marketing. But as today, we know that mass marketing now is becoming more and more uh, diluted because of the savviness of the consumers, they want now more personal marketing. This is also where we know that when we walk into a store, the first moment of truth is when we realize that's when the customer was actually attracted to a particular product. But now because of digitalization and people moving into the digital sphere, you cannot really pinpoint where is the first moment of truth and therefore it has now become more of zero moment of truth. Also, people think that when they produce product, it should be about the product. However, more and more companies today are realizing that product centric doesn't work anymore because mass marketing doesn't work anymore. And if there is going to be personalized marketing, therefore product centric will now become more customer centric. So there are an explosion of products. We have a choice of way or more than 2000 shampoos, 4000 facial products, 3000 biscuits, chocolates, and even soft drinks. These kind of statistics can drive any company and any retailer crazy by just finding out what is the important mix of assortment to reach the customers en masse 
and how can the uh, retailers cope with this glut? So there must be a need for a scientific approach to optimize product range and especially base allocation. So because choices are increasing, what retailers stock where and at what price with what incentives is very important to influence the consumer's buying decision behavior and their choice of brand. How can the suppliers influence the retailer's decision? There is an old success formula. Now the success formula starts off from the street seller of the past. Of course, in Asia, this is quite a uh, thing that we see quite normally. Shopkeepers lived in the same neighborhood where they are acquainted with their consumers and they know their taste and needs. They tailor their product offering accordingly and customers are rewarded with the shopper loyalty. Just like the Indian sabziwalas and also the traditional neighborhood stores that you know. Now, if we were to be able to use the same old formula to put into the retail, how can this work? Modern retails practice a thing we call category management to listen to their customers. Using scan data coupled with shopper pricing, promotion and merchandising research, retailers can now learn their customer preferences and then from there develop customized merchandising and marketing programs geared towards their customers. Now, category management is a continuous cyclical process which starts by refining category strategies and tactics, realigning the retail mix, executing the plans and reviewing the performance. Now, this means that you start up by looking at the strategy. It is a deep understanding of shoppers and full appreciation of the retailer's purpose and core competencies. So, if you're talking about a retail store like Giant, for example, you should be able to stock uh, items which are low priced every day and not stock with luxury items. So you have to encompass crafting the retail chain's identity and value proposition. What is the differentiation of that particular retail? Think about partitioning the shoppers into segments and identifying which target segments to pursue with what categories and then distinctively positioning the retail banner within the minds of the target shoppers. Next, moving on to retail mix, consider what categories should be put in the store, including the merchandising, the pricing, promotion, store maintenance and location. Executing a good elements of retailing mix that should be aligned at the shelf into a coordinated program designed to achieve whatever desired outcome that the retailers have set. And then from time to time, periodically redu review and identify the business issues and the set imperatives with the objects and targets that address these issues. So management must make sure that they offer the best mix in terms of return of investment. Now, a good category management is mean, means that there must be a strong marketplace equity. And this is a very delicate relationship between the retailers and the manufacturers or we call them suppliers. So the consumers buy the brands, not the categories. The management of the brands in the store or the category management will increase the marketplace equity if done well. Retailers then rely on the manufacturers for the brand knowledge and the quality. So in the category manager must find the right balance of purchasing the right categories, the right merchandising, and of course the right marketing tools and also tactics to ensure that the brands, the categories, and the retailers objectives are all met. Louis Vuitton, uh, Moet Hennessy, Bernard Arnault has said that if you control your factory, you control your quality. But if you control your distribution, you therefore control your image. 
This was right because what he meant was basically that how you present your uh, distribution and how you dis present your uh, categories will determine what kind of image you want for your consumers to think about. So can you imagine selling Louis Vuitton products at a hypermarket? Now that is not controlling your image. But if you were to sell your luxury items in a very upmarket luxury place, like for example, uh, Star Hill Gallery, then of course that is your image of the brand and also the retailer. So this partnership remains in the best interest of both the manufacturers and the retailers that the categories are well managed. So the consumers are the ones that come with the purchasing power. So the brand management and the category management is a very um, sensitive balance between the consumer's purchasing power, what they can afford, the image of the retailers and the store, and of course the brands of the manufacturers themselves. So this is where the trade marketing happens between the manufacturing and the retail stores. Now, this is where category management comes into play. This term has been coined by Brian F. Harris, who is a former professor at the University of Southern California and the founder of the partnering group of TPG. So in the early 90s, TPG developed a comprehensive eight-step category management cyclical process that became an accepted as the industry standard. So what these eight categories are is defining first the category, defining the role of the category within the retailer, access the current performance, and then set objectives and targets, devise what strategies to make the correct mix of categories, and then devise the tactics to make sure that the marketing plan for the categories fall correctly to the right kind of consumers, and then periodically the plan must be reviewed and implemented so that the objectives of the retailers and the manufacturers meets the needs and wants of the consumers. So the categories in the FMCG, as an example, can be broken down into these food and non-food categories. So if you were to take some time to just look at these categories, you'll notice that the categories are groups that meet similar needs. So the departments at the group of categories that must meet relative related needs. So as the markets evolve and new products get launched, then the category definitions may need to be tweaked and updated. Can you imagine 20 years ago, there was not so much of technology categories, but with technology moving so fast, you can imagine now how many technology categories there are, for example. So what are category roles? Firstly, destination. To be a primary category provider, you must make sure that you help define what the retailer as the store of choice by delivering the consistent superior target customer value. So this is really dependent on the retailer's brand image. And if you are the destination category, then you are considered the category that makes that particular retailer stand out. Imagine a sundry shop. A sundry shop is a retailer, so the manufacturers or the suppliers would be the category of food. You might want to look at routine. This is the preferred category providers and helps develop the retailer as a store of choice by delivering frequent competitive target consumer value. So even in a sundry shop, you might want to produce or sell cleaning products. So this could also be some sort of a routine category. Occasional seasonal category could be help reinforcing the retailer as a store of choice by delivering frequent competitive target consumer value. So if you were to go to Giant, you see food as the main category, and then you see cleaning products, and then you see occasional seasonal categories, probably one or two very uh, cheap 
furniture or even electronics like television or even DVD players. And then finally, convenient categories are the categories the provider help to reinforce the retailer as the full service store of choice by delivering good target customer value. So what kind of categories can you think would appear as convenience in the uh, place of Hypermart? Now, think about category strategies of each of the categories. If you're trying to build transaction building, then you must make sure you have higher ring up impulse purchase. Food is the easiest when it comes to hypermarkets. Profit contribution, higher gross margin, higher returns. So if you're selling something that is non-food essentials, then you might want to think about um, uh, uh, more upmarket food, like basically uh, higher chocolates or even higher tea or coffee. Cash generating are higher turns and are frequently purchased. For example, in terms of a hypermarket, it could be noodles, instant noodles. Exciting creation, impulse lifestyle oriented or seasonal, maybe some health cereals could be it. Image creating, frequently purchased, highly promoted impulse and unique items or seasonal, maybe bulk purchases of soft drinks, and turf defending used by retailers to draw traditional customer base. Now, in a sense of Giant, Giant may have their own cleaning dishwasher, or they may have their own bread, brand of bread, or their own brand of foodstuff. So this is also one of the ways that you think about the category strategies. The benefits of category management lies in, firstly, giving the manufacturers stimulated growth of their category and their brands. When you have a close collaboration with the retailers to strongly influence consumers at the store, the manufacturers themselves will benefit greatly. The customers will then have a better shopping experience knowing that when they go to the retail with the right category management, right category mix, they find everything they need, they are expecting to find, and it's merchandised in a logical and attractive manner. The retailers themselves will be able to cope with the complexity of their operations without having the need to think about what uh, are the, uh, the uh, without having to cope with the complexity of storing too many categories in their operations and maximizing their stores on inventory investment. Now, these improvements in the product range and merchandising enhances the shopper satisfaction greatly and also keeps the store loyalty and reduce stockouts, which means uh, uh, making sure that their, their stock is always there for the customers to find. It is also cost saving. That means you can cull poor performing items and optimize your inventory and space management by reducing the cost of associated with inventory holding and working capital, especially for categories that are not performing well. Space management is the heart of category management. Now, you know that within any retail space that you have boundaries. So these boundaries are allowing you to think about how best to trade off your conflicting objectives, that means you want high sales and low cost, and also the boundaries of the inventories and incidences of stockouts. That means you're trying to make sure that there are no incidences of stockouts. It is complex, yet it is crucial and important task because space is very valuable to retailers, especially their physical assets for brick and mortar retailers possess. So you have to consider the store, the size, and the importance of the category. And of course, the brand and the size of the item to the particular retailer. There is a growing intensity of battle for shelf space. You cannot be able to stock all the products that you want within a particular space. So the retailer is always driven to uh, value the space increase uh, the uh, value the space and of course develop their own products as well as save money from selling space 
but of course the supplier is always trying to push for their products by having an explosion of range so that the retailers get more choices for the consumers as well and also for them more shelf space means that there is more presence for the consumers to uh, consider and it's also a way to beat the competition right this is a very delicate situation now space decisions are often made by asking few questions where to locate in the store in adjacent to what other categories should my product be placed how many space is given to a certain category and how much space is to be given to each brand or each SKU in terms of how many facings which means how prominent or salient is the particular product going to be and finally where will the products be positioned on the particular shelf all these questions are to do with space management and particularly category management where do we place leading brands or kids range or heavy packs and etc now some of the terms that you might want to know when it comes to category management or space management is facings think about facings as the number of units of a product that are visible at the front of the store so this means that the amount of shelf space is the product occupies dependent on its facings in this example that you see here whisk has two facings in their shelf per row so when you know about facing now you need to know how to manage the assortment the assortment means that which items or SKUs to stock is dependent on several factors for example the size of the store size and importance of the category and size of the brands size of each item and also the size of margins that each of the categories can be sold for in order to earn a profit you have to use research and marketing analytics to enhance the assortment and the sources of information now market and consumer information is very important as to what people buy and buy together internal scan data and financial information will also give you this piece of valuable uh, information managing assortment across different store groups really depends on the customer profile and the store size you can use a thing called planograms to display facings and to manage facings now if you notice on the planograms color codes are used to portray different characteristics about the items such as the brand name segment and for instance stock level in this particular example you notice that the color codes portray items that are understocked extreme understocked extreme overstocked and also overstocked adjust the facings so that the stock levels are always in line with the sales rate by moving products around and block them in a manner that is aligned with how people shop with that category so that you influence the consumer decision with essentially identify and prioritizing a decision a shopper makes while shopping providing a good basis for merchandising and this will also help to influence and balance the shoppers decision when they purchase so for example you might want to use an example of a wall planogram for clothing now this is an example of clothing managed merchandising wall using smart draw if you notice that it is color coordinated it is also um, category coordinated for females and for the males now this example looks at a serial planogram if one glance it looks like it is okay because it is blocked by manufacturers right so you have 
the post cereal as the yellow color. And then you have the Kellogg's as the red color. If you were a consumer, you might think that this is okay, but what if there is a better way for you to manage this facing? It is messy if you were to block by buyer segments. Now, let's say the same planogram, we block it by child segments, health segments, and also the variety segments. Now, the idea behind blocking the planogram really depends on whether you want to cater to the consumers or whether you want to cater to the retailers. Merchandising is usually not aligned to the consumer buying habits. But now, if you want to stock according to buyers, um, uh, decisions, then as a result, you will probably get some SKUs heavily overstocked while others are extremely understocked. So if you were to improve the planogram by blocking by shopping habits instead of brand categories, then you will notice that there is an easier way to manage your categories because now you notice that there are more place for growing adults and health segments facing in line with the sales rate yielding optimum inventory allocation. If you do this rather than by going by brand, if you will notice that a lot of sales will then commensurate with the buying habits. Try going to a store today and see whether or not the facings of a uh, category management is done by brand or done by consumer shopping habits. You'll be surprised by what you find. Now, I'd like to show you a very quick video on developments of trends in retailing by showing you an example of Tesco Home Plus. Tesco Home Plus is number two in Korea. Tesco had to overcome one obstacle, a fewer number of stores compared to the number one company. Mission, could we become number one without increasing the number of stores? Idea, let the store come to people. We created virtual stores. Our first try was subway stations. Although virtual, the displays were exactly the same as actual stores. Only one thing is different. You use smartphones to shop. Scan the QR code with your phone and the product automatically lands in your online cart. When the online purchase is done, it will be delivered to your door right after you get home. Result. People can shop at Tesco Home Plus wherever they go without having to visit the actual store. Currently, Home Plus has become number one in the online market and is a very close second offline. Now that is a great way of shopping if you say if I say so myself. Now, besides South Korea, the incidence of online shopping for groceries is not significant in other countries. Um, however, you can also see that there is an increase of this fast moving consumer goods when it comes to online grocery shopping, mostly around in the Asian countries, China and South Korea, whereas UK, France is slowly picking up. What about your country? Is online shopping a thing, especially when it comes to groceries? And what about the introduction of technology? Would technology be a game changer for people to buy online or even have a better shopping experience when they go to the store? For example, in the longer term, would augmented reality be a reality for most people to try out clothes? Now, Topshop is one example that has already done this. You might want to also look at uh, Sephora, which creates an app that helps you to put your makeup on without actually putting it on. 
and also IKEA as an example of putting your um, picking out a particular uh, furniture from a product uh, uh, a catalog and placing it anywhere in your house without actually uh, moving the furniture into your living room yet. There is also more things like new near field communication that would change the way we pay and per, uh, purchase. So all these technology will help enhance the shopping experience when we go to the retail store. Now, another video I like to show you is this Herma store, which is a very, very uh, famous chain store by Alibaba, which shows you the supermarket of the future. Herma stores combine the best of online and offline shopping experience. Now, it has been said that the offline stores of the Herma store is just like a storefront, not necessarily to get people to shop, but more of showing people what is being displayed. And you can, after experiencing the shop, go online and create an account to buy something that you want and combines the best elements of offline to online shopping experience. So what are the key takeaways of this particular lecture? Firstly, there are more consumers and therefore more spending power and more affluence products and services and more media out in the market, which means there are going to be more choices and therefore more effort is needed to attract the attention of the right type of consumers. You must use data to organize your offering in a meaningful and effective manner and help the consumers to shop easier using the age old formula of online storefronts creating value for the consumers. One way is to use and think about category management whereby manufacturers and the retailers work together to build a strong marketplace equity that will resonate with the consumers, always constantly updating their categories and maximizing the space for stock optimization and cost reduction. And finally, you can also think about using planograms and manage facings and stock categories to influence consumer purchases. Think about what technologies are being used to enhance shopping experience in the future. As part of your tutorial for this particular lecture, I would like you to explore these two new uh, softwares. One is called RapidMiner and the other one is called Power BI. RapidMiner and Power BI are both very powerful uh, mining tools and also extra uh, dashboards to show you consumer shopping trends as well as also category management. Then once you have gotten the taste of Rapid Miner and Power BI, which we are going to use in the next lectures coming, I would like you to read this article on market basket analysis by understanding what it is as an insight to support category management. When you have read the article, List down what are the emerging technologies that will enhance the science and the art of category management in the retail sector. That completes this particular lecture. 
for the next lecture, we are going to look into more in depth of marketing metrics and with a concentration of sales and distribution strategies and marketing metrics. So thank you very much and see you.